So, I just finished a very interesting afternoon yesterday with my 11-year-old boy, Mike. He called me, I was still at university where I teach, and he told me, Mom, I seem to not comprehend my math exercise. Can you please help me? I said, okay, since I'm on my break. So, he actively opened on the WhatsApp app the video. I could see him, he could see me, I could see the exercise. I helped him out, he was happy, and 10 minutes later, we finished, and we were both satisfied. When I reach home at five, he runs to the door, I open, and he says, Mom, I finished all my homework. Can I please go and play with my friends? I have to state the fact that his friends are not physically with him. One is in France. The other one is in the mountains. The third one is in Ashrafiyya, and we live in Mansouriyye. So, back online, he sits comfortably on the sofa, puts his headset with the microphone, and interacts in real time with his friends from all over the world. They were interacting, they were strategizing, they were critically thinking how to find this treasure, and he was so happy. He ran to me when he finished after 30 minutes, and he said, Mom, with big two eyes. I said, what? He said, did you know that in the Himalaya, there are big treasures, we found one, it was a vase, and on it, there are paintings that the Mayas did 800 years before Christ, and he was going on and on. I was looking at him like, wow, the power of gaming. He never runs and tells me that when he's working on his geography or his history subjects. But while he was playing, he memorized those geographical, historical, cultural facts very easily. He said, I overheard you say to Halo, uncle, who lives in Paris, that he's going to change apartments. Please, can I go see where he lives? I said, OK. Back online, he takes my phone, and he asks, he asks Halo on WhatsApp to drop us a 360 view of the street where he lives in Paris. So my 11-year-old boy could see all the buildings that are on the street, all the shops, and he could locate the building where his uncle lives, even if physically he's not there. Then he says, I'm so hungry, what are we going to eat? And here comes the mom guilt, the working mom guilt. The fridge is empty, we're going to order a pizza. So he jumps back to my phone, and on the app, he orders the pizza, he picks the toppings one by one, and he even pays with my credit card. 40 minutes later, the pizza was here. Afterwards, he did his Spanish subject on Duolingo. And he even learned Arabic on the app that I created, an interactive technological app that teaches Arabic for students. Afterwards, he said, I still have one hour until I sleep. Can I please go and produce my stop-motion movie? I said, stop-motion movie? Where did you learn that? He said, from a YouTuber. I stopped, played, stopped, played, rewind as much as I needed, and I could comprehend what to do. I downloaded the app, Stop Motion Studio, and here I am, frame by frame, builded my story with my toys, and I will upload it on my channel, on the YouTube channel that me and the father opened for our kids. Yes, we are very mindful parents while using technology in our household. We taught our children that all the content that you see online, someone created it. There are people creating content. So you might as well question everything that you see online. You will see good stuff and bad stuff. Be inspired by good things. And you on your own, you can also produce content. This amazing, scientifically critical boy who has a big imagination and lots of innovative things in his head going on, goes the next day 
to the same old school that I used to go to 40 years ago, with a big backpack on his back, to face one teacher in the same classrooms that I used to go to 40 years ago, him and 30 other students in the class. The lessons delivered are not catering to his personal cognition and cognitive empowerment. The lessons are not personalized. One teacher catering to 35 students in the classroom has proved to be detrimental for the kids. Why? Because each and every student has different learning capabilities, but they are treated as one. What is the outcome? He comes back home. He says, school is boring. I don't like it. I didn't understand all the subjects. I was unmotivated and I felt unseen. I raised my hand in the classroom and not always I'm interpelled by the teacher. So what is the solution? Can we still deliver the lessons the way it used to be 50 years ago and 60 years ago? No. We need to introduce education technology into the classrooms. Are we going to get rid of the books and the copy books and the writing? No. We are going to expand the learning from this to that, and both technology and the traditional learning will complement each other. What are we going to do? We're going to install in every single classroom laptops connected to the internet with integrated learning management systems that has AI tutors. Yes, AI. Last day, I, was, I heard a voice I didn't recognize in the room of Mike. Who came? I opened the door. He was talking to ChatGPT. He said to Chad, these are two pages of the story I have to read. I'm giving you pictures of them. You are going to read them for me. And here goes ChatGPT reading the two pages. Even, he said, slowly, ChatGPT, I'm only 11 years old. And voila, ChatGPT reads slower. He even engages with the AI and says, what do you think about the narrator and this and that? It was amazing. Why? Because in my home, I taught my kids how to use the internet. This Ferrari that we all have at our fingertips, no one taught us how to use it. All the parents gave this Ferrari to the kids and said, go ride. How are they going to protect themselves? Because technology has its advantages and disadvantages. Because we are producers, me and my husband, in our uh, multimedia studio, we took the kids to the studio and we made them hear the voice of mom. We said, this is the voice of mom. They said yes. Then, with an AI cloning technique, we made the voice of mom say a text that she never said. And they were like shocked. Oh, the AI can do that? Yes. We even took a picture of dad and we made it move in a video and say something that he never said. Like this, the kids are questioning all the content that they see, and they can protect themselves from fake content and deep fakes. But at school, what are we teaching them? Nothing. They need to be technology literate to be able to live in this community with robots, with AIs, with augmented reality, with virtual reality, with social media, with cyber bullying, with cyber attacks, and be able to protect themselves. So we need to introduce technology to, school, to schools so that our kids learn how to use it for their own advantage and their own benefit, and so that they can be able to protect themselves. The AI tutors on the learning management system of every single student will personalize the learning journey for every single student. And that is amazing. You will say, what would be the teacher's role then? They will be the facilitator in the classroom. 
the managers who will see on their laptop the progress of every single student and know where are the pain points and give reinforcement programs for those kids. They will go out from the classrooms with all the material in their head and go home without homework to be able to play outside in the sun, do soccer and football and basketball. Yeah, it was a dream back 50 years ago, but now we can achieve this dream thanks to educational technology. Furthermore, we have to shake our curriculums and introduce entrepreneurship, public speaking courses, business courses for students, yes, so that they can thrive in this ever-changing futuristic environment and so that they fall in love with learning. We will bring up new future leaders who can thrive in this environment, but with technology as a friend, not as an enemy. Thank you.